Hey, what's up everyone, Kevin here. In this video, I wanna share with you guys five inexpensive, low-cost snowboards that will help to save you some money this winter. Snowboarding is one of those things that is a bit more expensive to do, but hopefully with this video, you can find that inexpensive option that really works for you. So I'm gonna go through five boards and each of these snowboards is gonna be in a different category. So I'm gonna give you an inexpensive beginner snowboard, a park board, all mountain, a free ride powder snowboard, and also a wide volume shifted board. So hopefully an inexpensive board for everyone. And I'm also gonna throw in a couple bonus boards just to give you guys a few extra options. So starting with an inexpensive beginner snowboard, I've chosen the K2 Standard. The K2 Standard checks all the boxes for a good inexpensive beginner snowboard. Starting, it has a flat to rocker profile, and this basically means that the rocker towards the tips of the snowboard is gonna make this board less catchy as you're completing turns, and it's also gonna make it easier to initiate a turn. So two really important things for beginners to look for. The K2 Standard has a soft flex, which is really important as a beginner. It's easier to manipulate the board under your feet with that softer flex. And the reason it has that soft flex is because it has an Aspen wood core. So Aspen wood is a lightweight wood that's a bit softer and easier to flex. The base on this board is extruded, and there's basically two types of bases in snowboarding, centered and extruded. An extruded base is easier and cheaper to manufacturing, so keeping the cost on this board lower, and it's a base that's easy to repair as well. And then finally, K2 detunes the contact points of the snowboard, another thing just making this board less catchy. In my opinion, for the price of this board and how it all lines up, you get a great beginner snowboard. Next, I have a great inexpensive all-mountain snowboard that I think is really good for intermediate riders, and that is the Arbor Foundation. And what makes the Arbor Foundation so great is first, it comes in at a low price. You still have rocker, so the rocker is, again, just gonna make this board very catch-free, easy to initiate a turn. But one thing that Arbor gives you is grip tech. So you get added contact points where your snowboard bindings are. So right at your feet, you're gonna get a bump at each side of your foot, giving you that extra grip in the snow as you ride along the ice. So if you do ride in icy conditions, grip tech is awesome. The core of this board is a mix of poplar and polonia. So the poplar wood is gonna be a soft wood, making this board light and flexible. And then the polonia is gonna give it a little bit more stiffness, which I think is something that you want for alt mountain conditions, just to make it a little bit more stable riding through that variable terrain. You get an extruded base on this snowboard, which helps to keep it inexpensive, but it's not gonna glide quite as fast and it's gonna be a little bit easier to damage. But then on the flip side, it's easier to repair as well. And there's also bio resin in this snowboard. So if you're concerned about the environment and keeping things a bit more natural and keeps the board flexing a little bit softer as well. The Arbor Foundation, I think a really great option if you're that intermediate all mountain rider, especially if your local mountain tends to get icy, that grip tech is really gonna help you across those icy slopes. Next, I've got an inexpensive board for the terrain park, and I think this one is great for beginner to intermediate terrain park riders. And I've chosen the Solomon Sleepwalker. So starting off, this board really gives you just some of the fundamentals that are great for that beginner to intermediate park level. Um, you get that softer flex, so it's gonna be easier to press and more forgiving. The profile of the board is flat with camber under your feet and then rockers out towards the tips. With that camber, it's gonna help give you a bit more energy for ollies and nollies. You're gonna be able to get yourself into the air that much easier, but it rockers out towards the tips, so still not making it that catchy and a bit easier to initiate that turn. This board is a true twin, so it's gonna ride exactly the same whether you're riding your normal way or if you wanna learn and ride switch. The core of this board has been designed to make it more optimal for freestyle and park. So this is an Aspen wood core, but it also has some denser woods along the edge of the board so that it's stronger and more durable from impacts. The sidewalls of the snowboard also have rubber inserted into the sidewall, helping to dampen the board so you don't feel as much of the vibration coming up through the snowboard. And then finally, the biggest feature is you get a centered base. So you get a base that glides better, is a bit harder and more resistant to damage. And for the price, getting that center base is a huge bonus. The Solomon Sleepwalker, I think a really great beginner to intermediate park snowboard for the price. 
Next up, I've got an inexpensive free ride slash powder snowboard. And this category I think is the most difficult to keep at a low price because the powder free ride boards typically have the most amount of tech going into them. The shape is harder to construct, but this board has managed to do it at a bit of a lower price point. So the next board is the Solomon Dance Hall. And the Solomon Dance Hall has been pretty popular the last few years. I think it's because of that lower price. So starting, you get a tapered directional shape. So when you're riding powder, typically you have to lean back to get the nose up. But with that smaller tail, it's gonna help the tail to sink and the wide nose is gonna help the nose to float. That tapered shape is perfect and what you want for the powder. The Dance Hall has an Aspen wood core. So that Aspen wood is gonna keep the board lighter but still pretty flexible which I think is a really good quality if you're that intermediate free rider or if it's your first time going into powder the flexibility is gonna make it that much easier there's two really cool features in this board too which I think are really good value for money you get basalt stringers in the tail of the board so those basalt stringers are gonna give you more energy so if you load them up for an ollie they're really gonna react and help you get up into the air they're gonna give you a bit more stability through the tail and help to damage in your ride as well so that you're not feeling all the vibrations coming up through the board and you get a centered base so you get that harder base that slides better and is more durable this board is really packing a lot of good tech into this board to make it a good free ride pow board for that intermediate rider keeping it at the lowest price they can while still putting in a lot of good tech before I get to the last board, I just wanna throw in a couple of bonus boards just to give you guys a few more options. There's the Nitro Cinema, which I think would be a great inexpensive all-mountain snowboard for an intermediate rider. So this one has Nitro's gull wing, so you get camber under your feet and rocker in between and towards the tips. And this profile is gonna make it really easy to make quick turns wherever you go on the mountain. Another option for an inexpensive all-mountain park snowboard would be the Ride Manic. The Ride Manic gives you a standard camber snowboard, so that extra camber giving you a bit more energy, a bit more responsiveness and stability. This board's also a little bit stiffer, kind of like mid-flex, so maybe more geared to an intermediate rider. And you also get some carbon stringers in this snowboard. So for that low price, to get carbon in the snowboard is a pretty good highlight, and that carbon is just gonna give you more energy from the board, so as you load it up, it's gonna give you that much feedback for getting an ollie or nollie or holding a press. So lots of cool features in the Ride Manic. The final inexpensive board I wanna talk about is a volume shifted board. And this is a wider board that would be excellent for someone who has big feet. I know for people out there that have bigger feet, it can be hard to find that perfect board for you. So I think this is a really good inexpensive option. And that is the Ride Twin Pig. So the Twin Pig, it has a lot of really great features. So it's a twin snowboard, so you can ride it in either direction. So if you just wanna ride the whole mountain or if you wanna take it into the park, very versatile. This board is also volume shifted, so you can ride it wider and shorter, making the board very nimble and easy to turn. You're also getting rides slime walls, so the side walls of the board are built to dampen any vibration, so making for a smoother ride. This board is still fairly flexible, so I think pretty good for beginner to intermediate. Uh, but the core of this board is Aspen with some bamboo and polonia. So the Aspen is that soft wood making it flexible, but the bamboo and polonia is gonna give it a bit more strength and stability and zones in the board where if you load them up, they're gonna give you some response. And then finally you get a centered base. So that stronger, harder, more durable base. I've even had friends that have taken this board into powder and they love it because of that extra width helping it to float above the snow. So a really great board, I think, if you have wider feet and you need that inexpensive price point as well. Amazing, so I hope this gives you some inexpensive options for the upcoming winter. I'll put links to all these boards in the description if you guys wanna check them out. And if you guys have any recommendations of boards that I may have missed, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe here to Snowboard Pro Camp. Have fun out there snowboarding, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.